We've got some things to do this morning, including a conversation with Andrew Campanella, who joins us this morning on the line. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And Andrew joins us as the president of National School Choice. And uh, he is uh, going to be the National School Choice Week. Is and, and, Andrew, when is it? Is it this week? Through the 30th. Say it again. January 24th through the 30th. Oh, so we got time. We got time. Yes, we do. <laughs> hey, school choice uh, has been a, a subject of much controversy down through the years, uh, but I think probably in this last year or so. Um, uh, it's, it's gotten a little bit of momentum, hasn't it? It really has, and I don't think it should be controversial because it's not political, it's personal. It's families choosing schools that meets, meet the needs of their kids. You've got traditional public schools, public charter schools, magnet schools, private schools, online schools, and homeschooling. And school choice doesn't mean that any one of those types of schools isn't a good fit for all kids. It means that parents should be able to and can choose schools that meet the needs of their individual kids. And so our goal is to help parents do just that, navigate their options, do so in a nonpartisan, nonpolitical, uh, completely awareness-focused way. So how has this past year, when so many school children are taking classes online, even within the context of their their regular schools, how has that helped the movement? Well, what I would say is it's opened a lot of families' eyes. For the first time ever, every single parent in America has had to be involved and engaged in their child's education at the same time as every other parent has been. And so parents are seeing the good and the bad. They're seeing what their kids are learning, and they're seeing what their kids are not learning enough of. And parents want options, even parents who otherwise would have loved their children's existing schools. They want options because the switch to emergency remote learning in some cases has not been smooth, and families want their kids to either go to in-person learning or to learn online um, in a different setup. And so we've seen 63% of parents across the country saying that they have looked or are looking for a newer, different school for their child. I didn't even believe that number when we ran that survey. We had to run it again with a whole different group of people, and we got the same result. It is an incredible growth in support and interest in school choice. With so many people now more open to the idea of school choice, let's go back to before this past year, maybe opened a few eyes, and and talk about some of the traditional advantages that uh, you have noted as an advocate for school choice uh, are are some of the, the best arguments for it. I think the best argument for school choice is that every child is unique, every child is different, Kids have their own set of interests and talents and also challenges. And so we can't expect one type of school, regardless of what that type of school is, to be able to serve every single child and make sure that every single child's needs are taken care of equally. Because we don't expect that of any other institution in our country. That's why there are choices and opportunities we have in where we live, the types of cars we drive, the types of parks we go to, uh, what we watch on television, what we eat, etc. So when families are able to find schools, regardless of their type, that better meet their kids' needs, kids are more likely to learn, succeed, thrive, and be happy. And that's what we should want for everybody. And school choice doesn't mean that one type of school shouldn't work for anybody or that one government body is picking one type of school over another for all kids. It means parents are making these choices, and parents know their kids best. School choice week coming up uh, the week of uh, January the 24th, So, and that's a national event and a national advocacy. Uh, let's narrow it to Pennsylvania. What does Pennsylvania offer in terms of school choice? You know, Pennsylvania families have more choices for families than families in other states. There are traditional public schools with some open enrollment programs uh, that allow families to choose schools in different districts. There are a lot of public charter schools available for families across the state. There are magnet schools focusing on themes like math, science, technology, the performing arts. The state has a wide variety of free, tuition-free online public schools that are full-time. There are private schools and there are scholarship programs and tuition assistance programs that help families better afford those private schools. And, of course, every family has the right to homeschool their kids. So there are a 
there is a wide variety of options for families across the Keystone State. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, you have um, had to present in a number of different settings the the, the case for um, for for school choice and and for for many of them uh, probably people have said to themselves, well, uh, it, it's really just an online thing, isn't it? But it's not. It's it's much much broader than that. That's right. I mean, there are a lot of different options out there. A lot of the, most of the options during a normal time would be in person. Uh, So the charter schools, the traditional public schools through open enrollment programs, the magnet schools, private schools, all of them are in person. You also have the online schools and the homeschooling. So there are six sectors, and parents can choose between and among them. And uh, our goal, again, is, is to make sure that families have the opportunity to find an environment that best meet their, meets their kids' needs. And during a non-pandemic time, some families find online schooling to work better. Other families find in-person learning to work better. And still yet, other families find a hybrid mixture of both to work best. So it really depends on your family, and it really depends on your child. So I know you don't have to wait until National School Choice Week to start your, your investigation of, of the whole concept, but uh, during School Choice Week, what do you recommend people do? Well, what we hope that families will do during School Choice Week is if you're looking for a new school or learning environment for your child for the next school year, start the process now and don't wait because if you start the process now, you'll have the most amount of time to actually find the right environment. Now, if you're happy with your child's school, if you're happy with the education your child is getting, share your story, share your experiences, promote your child's school during the week. We want a positive celebration, a positive uh, week of awareness of all education options out there, and that means people who are happy and successful telling their stories to inspire other families too. So I'm sure there are tons and tons of resources out there. What are the ones that you recommend that parents investigate? Sure. We have built more resources for families than have ever existed online. They're all on our website, schoolchoiceweek.com. Comprehensive, detailed, practical, jargon-free resources for families focused on your state and in your community. And we have been building them all year during this crazy pandemic. So uh, we hope families will check them out. I'm, I'm interested in the phrase you just used, and you emphasized it, jargon-free. Uh, people can't yes. get, they can get caught up and confused, can't they? No, you know, I will say this. Education for being something that impacts everybody's life sometimes is the most user-unfriendly field out there. <laughs> and uh, when I wrote my book about school choice, and as we've put together resources for our website, we've really made it a focus to get rid of the unnecessary jargon that doesn't even need to exist at all. Um, I hear a lot of families saying, look, I get the basics, but what the heck are all these terms? And half the time I say, I have no idea. I don't know who came up with that. <laughs> you know, we've got to have a better way of explaining things so that everybody can understand them instead of, um, I guess, purposefully making people feel excluded because of the crazy ways we, we describe things in education. Yeah, because that's, a, that's an invitation to shut it off, isn't it? It is. It really is. It's an invitation to uh, tell people that they're almost not wanted. Uh, We don't want their involvement. When in reality, the more people involved in education, especially parents, working with educators, working with school leaders, the better, because this is about kids and it's about their success. And the more people who can effectively communicate about it and connect about it, uh, the better off kids will be. We're talking with Andrew Campanella. National School Choice Week is coming up the week of January the 24th. Uh, Andrew, when we think about school choice uh, and uh, online, it can be a little bit quiet, let's say, in terms of uh, just me and my investigation. Are there actual people out there that others can talk to that are going to guide them through a little bit of the process? In some uh, states and communities, there are parent navigator organizations that will help families go through the process. I'm thinking of uh, places like Families Empowered that focuses on that, community organizations, churches. They do help parents with these things. So I would say ask around, absolutely. Um, And you can definitely go to our website, not to put in another plug, but we've got the step-by-step guide that families need to go about making a choice. And we don't steer you in one direction or another. We let you determine what type of school you want for your kid. We're non-biased. And uh, we just want parents to be able to make um, 
informed decisions without the stress and without the complication. And would I be correct in saying that there might be a, a model that just hasn't worked for a kid uh, and uh, they were able to find through school choice uh, something that fit them a little bit better? I would say that that is the rule and not the exception because a lot of times it's a situation where one school might be a really good fit for one kid or a lot of kids, but it might not be a good fit for your kid. Doesn't mean there's a problem with your kid. Doesn't mean there's a problem with the school. Just means that your kid is better served in a different environment. That's something that people miss when they talk about school choice. Folks want to talk about the politics of it, the policy, the impacts on adults, the impacts on systems. I want to talk about the impacts on kids. And what you mentioned is exactly right. If you can find a school that is a good fit for a child, that is a win for everybody. And we should be doing that all around. We should make sure that all of those schools out there are funded and receive the resources they need to help our next generation because it's incumbent on us to keep everything going. And, and kids will help us do that when they grow up. He is the they author. will be the leaders of tomorrow. He's the author of The School Choice Roadmap, Seven Steps to Finding the Right School for Your Child. He's Andrew Campanella. Give that website once more, Andrew, if you would. Schoolchoiceweek.com. Beautiful. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. You too.